What's up, you guys? Today, we're going to talk about the new plugins in FL Studio 21. This includes the Luxfer, which is part of the All Plugins Edition, the Vintage Phaser, which is the Signature Bundle and Up, the Multiband Delay, which is the Producer Edition and Up, as well as the VFX Sequencer, that should be the Fruity Edition and Up. If your FL Studio Edition is not high enough for one of the plugins, it will open as a trial version until you buy it or upgrade. Without further ado, please like and subscribe. Let's get started. First things first, we have Luxverb. Luxverb is going to have an input option. This is actually going to be how much is input into the effect. And this does not affect your dry. So if I play this, You can see that. I also don't have any wet though because I have no input coming in to the effect. Really cool for adding throws and things like that. There's lots of creative options here. We have brightness for a brighter reverb, room size, diffusion, the standard stuff, uh, character which affects the tail and our modulation for that character. We have pre-delay with a time option for syncing. Awesome, cool plugin. We have a whole feedback section and we can also add a resonance with our peak gain here or even cut if we wanted to on our output signal. On the bottom, we have an envelope option. What to note about this envelope option is our threshold option here is going to affect the way this scales either positively or negatively, depending on which way we turn this, and it'll automate that to do it. Let's turn down our wet. You can hear it automating. We also have a sidechain option here. And if you do route for sidechain, you will have that option here. Now, before we move on, I do have an in-depth on every single one of these buttons. If you want to see that, click above. Next, we have the vintage phaser. Our maximum minimum is going to be the minimum maximum. You can kind of imagine that our LFO for our phasing is going to go between these two points here. You can see them represented in frequencies at the top left too to give you a better idea. We can also go to manual where we can manually move it. So if we listen. We will now be controlling the phasing instead of letting the LFO do it over here, uh, this modulation. And this modulation is going to be the character or the LFO that is running the phasing. On our phasing here, we also have feedback. The higher the feedback, the more, of course, that feeds back into the phaser, uh, helping to add character. We can time sync our LFO here by clicking tempo sync. Our tension, if you pay attention here, this is our modulation type. We have triangle and sine. Our tension is going to change the curvature of our LFO. Over here, we can turn on a delay, and this is just going to be like a standard delay. It's just built into the effect. Really cool if you play with it, high pass, low pass, stereo separation, either left or right, a mix knob, feedback, all the good stuff. And then we also have noise that can be added to our signal. Next, we have the multiband delay. Now, the multiband delay is going to delay each and every single one of these little frequency ranges. You can see the frequencies marked off here by wherever this blue line is. So this one right here would be 600 milliseconds. Now, to actually hear this delay, you have to turn this one way or the other. And this is your delay scale. So if we go left, it's actually going to delay us behind. And if we go like this, it'll delay after. We've got cool options here for harmonics, a smoothing option for when we're switching between things that are not alike. And this would be good for using for switching between banks, which one of the things I think is the coolest is if we draw something in here, go and draw something in here, click this drop down. I clicked interpolate one to eight. Now, as we go, the switches between the two. And instead of having to switch banks, you can just morph. And the smoothing affects the way that morphs. We can draw with different options here. Cool effect. 
Next option we have, we'd have to open an instant of Patcher. Let's go ahead and add a plugin. We will add the 3X oscillator, which we used to not be able to add, but FL Studio 21 made it possible. So there's that. Don't know why my Patcher is so small, but whatever. So weird, I'll figure that out later. Anyways, now that we have that, let's go ahead, move that over and add the effects sequencer. Don't want to unhook that, we'll hook this up, open up this bad boy. And now when we play notes, it's going to follow the sequencer here. Now this has multiple different views, which you can click across here. So going over this really quickly, we've got a randomize option. We can see all the different presets there and scroll through them one by one. We have the section we're in now, which is note select, which chooses all of these individuals, scale root N1 through N5. I honestly don't 100% know exactly what those are, or what they do. We have velocity options for each. We have octaves, so we can set them in different octaves. We can also do multiple octaves at once, although I don't 100% know how to do that. We have gate time, which as you move this up, it makes it a longer gate. As you move it down, it makes it a shorter gate. We have step type, which gives us chords and rests and other options. We also have scale step. I'm going to assume since there's 12 of these, they are semitones, and we could probably climb. Yep. As you can probably tell from the way this explanation was put together, I haven't really used this. And so therefore I do apologize. There is no in-depth video on this cool effect we have here. In the event that I do make one, I will add that here in this video. And there you have it. The four new plugins for FL Studio 21. If you liked the video, please like the video. If you have any comments, please comment. I appreciate any subscribes. It's Warren with Scale Audio and adios.